Thank you. The purpose of tonight's talk is to enlighten you about five different technologies that may correct the problems that Aubrey de Grey just described to you. Five different therapies that could be implemented right now using existing drugs. Nothing new has to be discovered to enable these therapies to work. What I'm gonna do right now is play you a video clip of something that aired on CNN on October 6th of this year. If you remember, October 6th is when that hurricane was offshore. We were kind of paying attention to the weather and not to the news. But I'm gonna play this for you right now. It's only a few minutes and it's gonna show an, a, a situation where old dogs are made young again. Is it? Good boy. He should be at the end of his life. He doesn't look it. Yes. Before you start taking Bethlehemicin, how long would he run around for? After about 10 minutes of running and playing, he would get really tired, stop, and, and then his arthritis would kick in. And then he wouldn't walk for the next two or three days. And now how long would he run around for? An hour or two. This drug is very likely to have the same effects on lifespan and health span in dogs and probably in people as we've seen in laboratory animals. So is this the miracle drug for dogs? I don't know if it's the miracle drug for dogs. It's the miracle drug for my dog. It's what is keeping him alive, I believe. You just saw a case where aging was reversed in that animal model. We are working with a group of scientists who are putting rapamycin into their own body along with metformin to see what kind of age reversal effect it might induce. And there is a large study being done right now with old dogs. And this is a compassionate study, by the way. These are old dogs that are sick and they're giving them rapamycin and they're looking to see what kind of an age reversal effect that can induce. Rapamycin sits on your pharmacy shelves. Wherever you're going by a pharmacy, there's probably rapamycin sitting there and you could buy it right now. But wait, let's see how to do it in humans. So it's not something we recommend you do right now, but it is working with the dogs. Now we're gonna learn a new word tonight called synolytics. Synolytics, syno re refers to senescent, lytics refers to destruction. So a synolytic compound destroys senescent cells. Now, these are your cells that we want to try to destroy. So if you wonder why we want to do this, well, senescent cells accumulate as we age. They impede organ function. They create low-level systemic inflammation. They can turn into cancer, and they shorten healthy lifespan. There is no value to retaining these senile dysfunctional cells that linger in your body far too long. They get in the way of healthy metabolic activity. Great news happened in 2015. Animal study using an existing drug called dacetinib. It's a leukemia drug. People with chronic myeloid leukemia take this every single day. The side effects aren't too bad, even though they're taking it every single day. And if you look at the benefits, though, that occurred when they gave just low-dose dacetinab periodically to animals, you're going to see improvements in frailty, improvements in arterial and cardiac function, improved bone density, uh, just one benefit after another, including extended healthy lifespan with one drug that's available right now. No need to discover a new compound. This drug already exists. And what we really like about these, this drug, and by the way, th these are some of the comments made by the researchers who developed the uh, study with the animals. They feel right now it's ready for testing in humans, and people are now looking to design clinical studies, including our company, to test whether or not this will have the age reversal impact that it did in the animal model. 
The enthusiasm from the researchers at the Mayo Clinic and Scripps Research Institute are incredible. If you read what they're saying up here, they believe this drug should be tested in human beings. And this is how easy it is to use dacetinab based on a protocol that's being worked on right now. You go to, let's say, the Bahamas, because you can't get it easily in this country. Doctors won't prescribe this for you very easily. It's a leukemia drug. They're afraid they're going to lose their license if they prescribe this in this country. But you go to the Bahamas, and you go to one of the many doctors that we have very nice connections with, and you enroll as a patient. And that doctor reviews your blood test, determines that you can benefit from dacetinab. He prescribes three tablets, just three tablets. One you take when you're over in Nassau and bring two more back with you to take the two following weeks. Three tablets of dacetinab along with the nutrient quercetin, which you can buy at any health food store. Just that simple protocol we feel may result in those significant reversals of all of those different aging pathologies. This is the simplest, by the way, way in which people who are aging and are loaded up with these senescent cells can purge those undesirable dysfunctional cells from their body and regain a lot of youthful functionality. I mean, these benefits are huge. The fact that one drug taken over a three-week period might do this for humans is outrageously encouraging. And the fact is it's been demonstrated in the animal model already. We already know it works in animals, so we want to see if it works in humans. That's why research is so essential. I'm now going to talk about reversing immune senescence. If nothing else kills us, by the way, and Aubrey had that up there on his slide presentation, our declining immune function is going to be a killer. The thymus gland is the master gland of immunity. It's responsible for many, many immune functions. The problem with our thymus gland, however, is that it shrivels as we grow older. It peaks right around puberty. And by the time we reach 40, we don't have a lot of thymic tissue left. And by the time 70 or 80 comes around, there may be virtually nothing left. And in response to us losing our thymic activity, immune senescence sets in, and it will kill us eventually if nothing else does first. This chart shows, and it's a complicated chart, and I'm not going to explain it in detail, how our immune system goes haywire as we grow past the age of 60 and 70. Our immune system basically collapses. It falls off a cliff. And yet, we feel we can restore that by regenerating the thymus gland. Now, these two charts are very interesting, and I'll just tell you what they mean. Um, they show that if you're 80 years old, and you engage in uh, just two blood tests. Uh, one is CD4, CD8 ratio. The other is delayed type hypersensitivity. Those two tests can predict if you're going to be dead within two years. Because if, if, if these reflect you are in a severe immune senescent state, guess what? You don't have very much long to go. We are determined to reverse this. It can't be done right now. We're determined, though, to make this happen. When I say it can't be done right now, I can't tell you where to go to get the therapy, but the research is proving incredibly positive. Because guess what? In the animal model, they've been able to reverse thymic atrophy. They've been able to regrow the thymus gland back into a youthful, functional gland. In HIV patients, they were able to regenerate the thymus gland and extend the lifespan of those HIV patients. And what happened in 2016 is unprecedented. A study was done with nine otherwise healthy older people, when I say older, over the age of 55, they were put on a protocol of existing drugs. Nothing new had to be discovered, just some creative ways of using these existing drugs. And they were able, over a period of a year, to regenerate the thymus gland. Life Extension contributed $60,000 to do MRI imaging to confirm that, and the latest results that we've heard is that those blood markers that indicate immune senescence, they're reversing. These people are having their immune functions restored with existing therapies that right now we want to see a trial expanded to 30 patients to see if we cannot duplicate the successful study that was done here. But uh, the thymus gland does more than just kill malignant cells and infectious agents. It also filters out pro-inflammatory autoimmune cells. So people suffering from lupus, MS, rheumatoid disease, 
uh, a wide range of autoimmune disorders, if we regenerate their thymus gland, we may cure them. And also organ transplants. You, people who have a new kidney put in, they often have to go on anti-rejection, immune-suppressing drugs. A healthy thymus would filter out those autoimmune cells and enable that person with an organ transplant to maybe reduce their dose or eliminate their dose altogether of those toxic drugs that they need to take. So we're only looking at raising 25 million to study all of the therapies you're gonna hear about tonight. Just 25 million, if this is the only therapy that works, and it's been proven to work in nine people so far. Nine people have tested this drug cocktail and it's worked for them. If we can expand that to 30 people and show it works in those 30 people, and the cost, by the way, to do that study for 30 people, only a million and a half dollars, just 1.5 million, and we could have a way for everyone in this room to reverse immune senescence at an affordable price. Thymic regeneration, it would be something that everyone over the age of 40 will do, just like people get vaccinated when they're children to avoid all these terrible viral diseases, just like people undergo colonoscopies, like people undergo flu shots. Everyone over 40 will want to do this once efficacy is demonstrated. And the good news is efficacy has been demonstrated in otherwise healthy older people who shouldn't have any thymic activity. The topic of tonight's lecture, as you know, is human age reversal. And that still may seem a little bit strange to many people in this room. But bear in mind, every single major medical advance was criticized. It was greeted with skepticism. It was even considered immoral. Every single medical advance, when age reversal becomes the norm, it will become an obligation of medicine just like it is an obligation of medicine to use a defibrillator when someone is under having a cardiac arrest. Just like all these other technologies have become real and, and an obligation of medicine, so will the reversal of human aging. We need to fund the physician scientists who have discovered ways to reverse aging in human beings today, but they're not receiving the funding they need, just like Alexander Fleming and the uh, other scientists who are involved in penicillin research, just didn't get anyone to back them up. It's an absolute crime. Now, the area of age reversal research that we are most excited about involves the infusion of young plasma constituents into older individuals. And the reason we're so excited about this is, is that when young blood is circulated into old animals, there is a systemic rejuvenation effect. I've cited three references there. There are actually dozens of references that conclusively show that young blood rejuvenates old animals. And what we're gonna do is show another news clip, October 27th, 2016. This is how new this technology is. We're gonna show this news clip right now and you can see what scientists are doing as far as using young plasma to make old people young. Right now, a lot of Bay Area geniuses are focused on solving one of the greatest mysteries of life, aging. One company is hot on the trail of an answer. Only on Five Tonight, Julia Goodrich reports scientists may have found a real fountain of youth, one that can repair aging brains in plasma from young blood. At Blood Centers of the Pacific, 22-year-old Matthew Ryan is donating plasma, a critical component of blood. I've always liked to help people. The pale yellow fluid can help save the lives of patients suffering from burns, shock, or trauma. For one thing, plasma contains all of the antibodies that you have to fight infections. But now scientists believe this fluid may contain something far more spectacular. Think fountain of youth, but with a twist. What's flowing through the veins of young people may help restore old aging brains. Neuroscientist Carolee Nikolic. The very first reaction, uh, I think, in, in all of us was uh, skepticism. Nikolic heads up Alcahest, a biotech company in San Carlos. He says plasma contains thousands of proteins that do different jobs. But when his colleagues analyzed plasma samples donated by the young and old alike, they were astonished. We have actually now for the first time discovered that, that there are hundreds of proteins that change with aging. Young plasma is awash in special proteins that rejuvenate tissues. But as we age, they're replaced by damaging inflammatory ones. 
So the scientists did a simple experiment with some very old mice. We've sped up the video for time. In a special maze that measures learning and memory, old mice have a tough time remembering how to get out. They're stuck exploring dead ends and making lots of navigational errors. But when injected with young human plasma, these old mice head directly to the exit without making a mistake. Not only that, their brains have changed. It's pretty dramatic. Those green dots? Newborn neurons, freshly sprouted in a part of the brain critical for memory and learning. We do our treatment, um, we see a doubling of that. At Stanford University, Alcahest has now launched the first controlled clinical study of young plasma in humans. It involves 18 people with mild or moderate Alzheimer's disease. The final results will come at the end of the year. If the trial proves safe, then a second study with more patients and a bigger dose. If the treatment eventually proves successful, the hope, by growing healthy new neurons, the brain may clear itself. We are reducing this inflammatory process in the brain. As for Matthew, he knows people with Alzheimer's and wants to help. I think it'll be pretty incredible to say that my plasma could, or anyone else's plasma for that matter, can help them to make somewhat of a recovery. In San Carlos, Juliet Goodrich, KPIX 5. The number of people living with Alzheimer's disease is growing fast. If this treatment works, scientists plan on identifying and then manufacturing the critical proteins that offer the greatest benefit. In the January 2015 issue of Nature, very prestigious medical journal, scientific journal, there was a review of all the previous animal studies on young plasma exchange. Uh, that's known as parabiosis, by the way, for the most part. And the consistent finding is that when young blood is exchanged with old animals' blood, those old animals grow biologically younger. And it's a systemic effect. It rejuvenates their heart, their muscle, and their brain. In fact, the brain seems to be the part of the body that benefits the most. Young blood rejuvenates old animals. We want to see that happen in human beings. Young blood also extends lifespan. It enables old animals to live longer when they have young blood put into their bodies. Parabiosis is the medical term, by the way, for what they're doing with the animals, where they're exchanging young, young blood with old blood in the animal model. And the good news is the leading institutions in the world, Cambridge, Harvard, Stanford, they're pursuing parabiosis research. They're looking for ways, just like you saw in that newscast, which was only aired a couple months ago, to enable older people to grow biologically younger. The technology is there. Johnson & Johnson has put $50 million into a research study at Stanford to see if young blood cannot be made into an effective treatment for Alzheimer's disease. And based on the preliminary data that we're seeing, it may very well work. This uh, is something that just is so outrageously exciting. But the idea that this just study just came out in November, by the way, where they took uh, blood and, and plasma from 18-year-olds, and they injected it into mice over just a brief period of time, and they got these kind of results. These kind of results, the one that entices me the most is that the old animals acted young. Because you know, as you know, old people, they don't behave young at all. They move very slowly. But the young animals were scampering around their cage as if they were much younger. So we're very impressed with this technology. And a significant portion of the money we're seeking to raise is going to go into this type of research. Because if it works, we're going to make some major, major breakthroughs. So we know conclusively today that young blood rejuvenates old animals. We need to translate that now into the human clinical setting. And for those who have doubts as to whether or not we can identify the right proteins, as to which specific proteins are inducing age reversal, we don't really care because smallpox was eradicated before anyone knew that viruses existed. It was eradicated. And if we're able to use stem cell mobilized young plasma to rejuvenate older people, we don't need to know exactly what's in that plasma that's doing it. If old people are becoming young again, we're going to be very, very happy. Very, very happy. And the great news is we know a lot more about aging today than what our ancestors did about smallpox. A lot more about the underlying mechanisms of aging. And yet our ancestors 
were able to eradicate smallpox wherever universal vaccination was initiated. Now, it took 180 years to eradicate smallpox from around the world. A long time. A long time. We can't wait that long. We can't wait that long to eradicate aging. We need to initiate these types of studies right now. And one of the proteins, by the way, that's been shown to reverse aging, it's been extensively studied at Harvard. It's called GDF11, Growth Differentiating Factor 11. It is a protein that has enticed a group of engineers so much that they are now going to test this on an increasing number of people because they've seen age reversal results already in themselves. This is a slide in which the first human being to ever put GDF-11 in his body describes why he's doing it. There are some real compelling pieces of evidence to indicate that putting GDF-11 in your body now will enable you to grow younger. And letting aging take its course, that's actually more risky, according to these, this group of engineers, than not trying GDF-11. Mechanisms of action of GDF-11 are, are very significant. It facilitates DNA repair. It reactivates stem cells in your body. It promotes the development of progenitor cells so that you can regenerate the damaged organs that are causing us to prematurely die. So there's really good data to show that if you just restore GDF-11, to youthful ranges, and I know that chart's not easy to understand, but what it shows is that animals with GDF-11 restored, their DNA repair is identical to that of younger animals. This is an incredible breakthrough. So that's motivated this group of engineers to start self-experimenting with GDF-11. And the anecdotal results are spectacular. They're growing younger based on the way they feel and look including a restoration of their sense of smell and their youthful appetite, sexual performance back down to a youthful level. Their gray hair is turning black again. This is what they're observing in themselves. But this is just anecdotal. This is not scientific. What scientific is are clinical measures of aging. And what they've done is implemented three clinical measures to determine are they really growing biologically younger. In response to GDF-11 therapy, well, there's a 20 to 30% improvement in skin elasticity. That's big. After four to 14 months of using GDF-11, they're seeing these kind of results occur this rapidly. In other words, age reversal may not take a long time. It may happen very quickly. As it relates to cognitive function, after four to 14 months on GDF-11, they're scoring much, much better. Their, their cognitive function dramatically improved. But this is the real shocker. And, and Aubrey de Grey talked about this as it relates to hypertension. He talked about arterial stiffness. This needs to be reversed, or hypertension and other medical problems are going to eventually kill us. Guess what? In response to GDF-11, four to 14 months, a 37% improvement in arterial stiffness. Their arteries are, are expanding and contracting with youthful elasticity again. This by itself, if this was the only benefit GDF-11 did, this would be a multi-billion dollar blockbuster. And yet, it's available right now, and people are self-experimenting. When I say available, it's available if you go through a very complicated network of, of individuals who are kind of using it in a veterinary experiment, but they are the experimental subjects, and they're getting these kind of results. And there is, again, this urgent need to fund age reversal research, adding a lot of time to people's lives, sparing pension funds, Medicare, Social Security, reversing aging so that people look, feel, and behave biologically younger. This is our objective, and this is our plan. We need to raise money from accredited investors, and we're looking for very wealthy accredited investors in the beginning here to put money into a company that will then use that money for a purpose to identify, which we've already done, we've identified five or six projects we want to fund right now. And we want to put the money into the scientist's hands, and the scientists that then develop validated age reversal therapies, well, that money then goes back to the company, and the company can use it to, of course, uh, do all kinds of things the companies do. Uh, do more research, 
and cause the, the, the company to become popular enough that other people duplicate us. We want people to copycat what we're doing so that lots and lots of research is funded and lots and lots of technologies evolve to reverse biological aging. At a minimum, age reversal therapeutics is going to be a catalyst that will stimulate the creative genius of the scientists that exist right now. And this is how easy it is to raise 25 million. We know about 10,000 wealthy, accredited investors who want to live longer. If just 250 of them put up $100,000, and I know that does not pertain to most people in this room, but if just 250 of people who can afford it puts up $100,000, we've got to $25 million. We can do all of the research that you've heard about tonight. All of that can be done for a very small amount of money. This is not like a, a biotech. And to give you an example of how money is raised for causes that you wouldn't think would generate this much enthusiasm, just three days after the tragedy at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, where 50 people were killed and 50 seriously injured, just through crowdfunding, over $4 million was raised to help strangers Strangers, donating money to help strangers. It's a wonderful act. Well, we want to help humanity. We want to save humanity from aging, but we also want to save ourselves. And yet we're being challenged right now to raise the money that we need to do this research. Uh, Time Magazine, April 2016, talked about children born today living to be 140 plus years. That's gonna happen, but that doesn't benefit anyone in this room. I don't see any kids in this room. We're all aging adults. We need to accelerate this technology so that we can live longer. We can benefit from the emerging science of age reversal. And we don't wanna be in this predicament. We don't have to accept this anymore as being inevitable. The technology exists right now to enable us to grow biologically younger to one degree or another. And these are the five to six projects that we wanna see funded right now. We don't wanna wait. Dr. Mahara is ready to go right now with his research. Dr. Greg Fahey with his thymic regeneration, the group of engineers with their GDF res restoration, the dacetinab, that research may be already being done. The company can utilize the findings to then enable people to get rid of their senescent cells and young plasma transfer taking the plasma from young, healthy individuals, putting it into the bodies of older people, and reversing their aging process. We don't know why anyone would hesitate to put money into this if they can afford it. Most people can't, and we know that. We're looking for the wealthy people to donate money in the form of an investment. So if the company makes money, they make money. But that's not the reason I'm here. I'm here to motivate people to understand that aging is no longer inevitable. It's something that we believe can be reversed. Can you imagine if just a tiny fraction of the ultra wealthy people of this world put a tiny fraction of their net worth into age reversal research? Everyone in this room would live a lot longer, a lot healthier, and move into a future where aging and death may be optional. Involuntary death may not be an issue anymore, and right now it is. We grow old, we degenerate, we suffer. And for all of human history, there was not much you could do about it. You'd cure a disease here and there, but then you'd die of something else. If we gain control over aging, and Peter Nygaard is a living example of someone who put over $20 million of his own money into technologies to advance this science forward. And all of the people that I have described today, they are engaged in research. They're engaged in fundraising aimed at turning this into reality. This is earth shattering from the standpoint of where we stand in human history today. Thank you.